Hello, my name is Grant Smith. I'm an illustrator and a comic book artist. Um, I personally do most of my work digitally. Um, right now I'm in a program called Clip Studio Paint. This is kind of the no frills version of this program. Um, there are two versions. One uh, adds a few more features that I just basically don't need. And this one is a lot more affordable for people. So it might be something you want to look into. I have also in the past used Photoshop. And um, it works good, but it's really expensive because you're paying... A monthly fee to use it um, so it really depends on what you like um, what I use Photoshop mostly for now is for digital painting and coloring I just like the tools a little bit better in it for those applications um, but another one that is great that is free and op open source is uh, Krita and this is what I actually started doing most of my comics in. Um, the reason is that it has a lot of the features you find in Clip Studio Paint. It's just missing one or two. Um, but it's a great program and I highly suggest it. Now there's also, you can go old school and just use uh, like your pens, pencils, and, and paper. And I'll touch on that a little bit as well. I have done that in the past, but not professionally. Just when I was learning to draw and over the years, um, you know, um, basically, yeah, learning my craft. I would, you know, often try the, the pre-made comic book bristle boards. Um, I found that the tooth is really good. Like the tooth, meaning um, how well the pencils... Uh, slide across the page because basically there's little ridges if you go with a microscope on your piece of paper so there's all these little ridges and some are smoother than others the smooth ones are great for inking and then um, regular drawing paper is the best for your pencils uh, which I will get into more later but first here what I'm gonna do is I'm going to show you how to set up your comic book page. Basically, you want to look at first your comic settings here. This is my finish size. So this is what would be um, cut after being printed for the from the for the final comic. So here I have. Uh, 6.63 inches by 10.25 inches. Now these numbers are off a little bit because this program can't allow you to do um, three digits past um, past the decimal. So they're a little bit skewered. Um, I also have a bleed of what should be 0 0.125. So I'm just rounding up on those. Um, they're close enough that you're not really gonna have any issues. Uh, you can also download templates from most printers um, from their websites and so you can bring that into usually they have a Photoshop one and sometimes they'll have an Illustrator one. Um, so those can be very useful. Um, you can also open up Photoshop files in Krita. So um, yeah, so that will have all the sizing and everything for what they use for printing. Um, already set in there. So the bleed is basically anything that goes past what's cut. Since the printer prints on these things in bulk and they have to cut them, they're not always going to be completely um, aligned properly. So they want just a little bit of leeway there with the cut. So that's why you have your bleed space. So you don't have just like a white line running down the edge of your page when it's printed. Um, also what I do is I put in a little default bo border here and this inner border is for print safe. Um, so text. 
So all your text I put within these margins. So that's a little in from the actual sides of the comic book. I think I did about a quarter of an inch on each side. And yeah, exactly a quarter of an inch on each side. And what that will do is it just makes sure that none of the text that you put in or any really important pieces of the artwork get cut off at all in the bleed process and the cutting process. Um, so that gives you a total canvas size of uh, 6.89 inches by 10.51 inches. And that is a resolution of 1200. Now, the reason why I'm using such a high resolution here is the fact that um, when you're doing it traditionally, they would use an 11 by 17 page, and that page was scanned into the computer at 300 DPI. So this just equals that. Um, yeah, so they would take an 11 by 17 inch page and they would shrink it down to this <laughs> similar dimensions to this before they would print it out. It just tightens up the artwork and, you know, um, allows you to put more detail into the piece. Okay, so that's the a single page. Now, you can also do a spread. So often, I will just do the first page, like title pages in that last setting. And then I will do most of the rest of the book in the spread template that I have here. Now this is basically two pages. So you want to imagine two 11 by 17 pages uh, taped together. So when you open up your comic book and you see two pages, um, that's a, these are roughly the dimensions you're going to get. So that would be 13.25 inches wide by 10.25 inches high. Um, and again, same with the bleed, um, same with the border. The only difference I'm really doing here is I'm cutting out um, the bleed space that would have been in between the two pages. So these spreads, when they're printed at the printer, they will actually be printing on pages that are, um, they, they print two, two pages at a time on one sheet. And well, actually four pages because that's double sided. So there's no real reason for there to be a bleed between the two pages. Um, so like, say I had a four page comic. Let me just should draw this out here for you. So this is your page. And so you have a comic that's open like this. You got your page one, your page two. Now on the other side, you would have page three and four. Now when it's printed though, Pages one and two wouldn't actually be part of this um, cover. So if I do a little 3D thing here. So page one, so page one is here. This one here is page three. So when it prints, these will actually not be numbered like this. So you would have page four and page one right there and this would be the outside so this would correspond to this page and this would correspond to the back of page three here and page three here would be here three <laughs> and this would be page two so this would be on the inside on the back of page one and then this is on the right there well, I hope that gives a little bit better of an idea of um, why that would, how that works in the printing process. So that's why I don't really need a bleed here since there's no cutting involved. Okay, so the first step of making a comic, you need a script. Okay, so there's two methods of doing a script. There's the Marvel method where the writer writes an outline. He sends that to the penciler who then 
does a bunch of thumbnails and basically writes the story through a series of drawing drawing it out through the pages and then the writer then receives that those thumbnails and then they write the dialogue and narration to fit those thumbnails now the standard method a writer just gives a detailed script to the penciler and then he finishes the artwork for the book um, there's no real format for scripting a comic book. I've seen ones that are super detailed. Um, some that are set up like screenplays. Um, but generally you'll get something like there, it will be broken down by like pay, page one, panel one. And then you will get a description of that panel and so man walks in wearing a well man walks into a store wearing a chicken costume um, and there's going to be a dialogue box and that is going to be for the chicken man and it's give me all your clucking money. So then, you know, like um, something very basic like that. And then you might also have a narration box that might say Chicago. Um, Chicago year 2020. Well, that gives you a rough idea of how a script is created and um, the different formats they can come in. Okay, so here I'm going to talk a little bit about how they panel out a page. Now, traditionally, comic books were originally um, compilations of um, comic book strips that you would find in newspapers. So when they first started doing this, they would often use something like this. It's a basically a grid system. So there's uh, four panels and three to four columns usually have th those panels. Um, often they would also have a title box, which would be basically two different panels like uh, joined together. Um, this was the standard for a real long time. Um, once they started making standalone comic books, um, then you started seeing something like this. Now, the, the grid basically changed to more of a 3x3 three, three three, um, grid with about 9 panels on the page. Um, but it wasn't long before they started playing with the grid. And then you would start seeing them taking what was their grid of three by three panels and then they would start combining some of them um, but the basic idea was still the same they'd usually have three rows here sometimes four where they would go back to the old style of the comic strip days um, but often it would you would see a lot of comics like being illustrated and paneled out like this in the golden era of comics so in the 50s or 30s to 50s you would see often stuff like this and then eventually you got to people when they stopped playing with the grid and they started breaking the grid you'd have weird stuff like this this more started coming up you would see um you can see some examples of this in from the like 60s to 70s but really in the 90s it became 
really big when the way you would break down these panels in really dynamic ways um so yeah so you'd have your one panel box two panel box here three four five so you can see how much more dynamic that would be and the way it would lead your eye would be different um it wasn't just a linear read left to right left to right left to right it kind of you have this big s pattern here of where your eye follows the action um myself i often stick with more of the traditional looking grids like this or actually even what i like to do as well is i will uh, let me just make a new layer here and i just like to panel out often just horizontally this is something that i really like um it's kind of more of the format that you would see this is more of a storyboarding way of doing it um and personally, my influences, even though I love comics, a lot of my influence comes more from from film than comics. So you'll see me often using the vertical from top to bottom um, format. This is kind of what my loose sketching looks like. It's not very detailed. You're just trying to get your shapes um, in there of all your your stuff you want on the page um so and yeah you just want to keep it really loose really circular really flowing the reason why you do this is if once you start trying to go in there and you're like doing this dashing thing you tend to get really stiff looking drawings um and once you add when you want to create the sense of movement you're not going to get exactly what you wanted um, when you're doing something like that now this is all static stuff so it's not going to make as big of a difference but it also it's it's nice to be loose like that because you can work fast usually i would have my loose sketch on one layer and then in the next layer I would start going in there and as you can see I started adding some more detail to the face here but let's just pick an area that I haven't worked much on yet and so this is just going to be a silhouette of the main protagonist's shadow now he's on a horse here I'm just trying to get the shape of a horse kind of going there and now you don't really have to um, fill all of this in scribble all this in um, especially if you're inking it yourself what a lot of people will do they'll just draw an outline of the shape that they want so if you had a shape of something here then what they'll do is they'll write B in the middle that will indicate to your inker that that needs to be filled in with all black. Now, <laughs> of course, I'm doing this really messy here. Um, so, say this part here. I'm going in here and... Oh, do I not have... What's going on? Oh, I have a selection there. This is borderline thumbnail <laughs> level that I do before I jump in there and I start inking. Um, it's just a time saver for me since I know that I am the person who's going to be inking it. I can really um, kind of just go in there the way I want to. So now if I go on to inking here, so you would have your pencils on a layer and then you want to start just kind of going over them a bit. Uh, 
This is what I would call like noodling here. Now these are not the actual vinyl inks here um, that I ended up doing for the page. This is a page I'm basically just kind of recreating to show this process. Um, but I'll give you an idea at least of how this is done. Now inking traditionally, now you want to take your pencil page and put it on a, a light table and use a whole different board. And the reason why is because like I was talking before about that tooth, um, you don't really often want to, you don't want to ink over your pencils because pencils will scratch the page. So every, uh, so here's your page. Every little pencil mark is just going to leave just a little bit of a divot. <coughs> And once you start putting inks on there, all that ink is going to rush into the, those spots. And often it will create, because it's going below the surface layer of the paper, it can bleed and you will start getting really muddy looking inks. So when you finally get to a final finished ink, so this would be my final finished ink page what you want to do is make sure you look at this from a distance that where you have it zoomed to what well, whatever the 100 percent is um, this way you can see if you're going too detailed now i'm right on the very limit here of what you can get away with detail wise and if you're going to go this detailed i would suggest doing just black and white comics the reason why is you, once you start adding color here and stuff the tone is really gonna start getting lost there um, another step I did is when I finished this page I went back and I went um, and printed it on a laser printer now the reason why I used a laser printer is that they're closer to what is going to be done in the process of printing for this next section um, of course again I start with first just uh, the flat colors now this is what I finalized on this was the quickest way I found of doing my color so I'd have my flats right there now these are the original flats so you can see that the colors are, aren't what I wanted. So what I would do would, is I would select one of the colors and then with the magic tool, magic brush tool. Um, oh, I gotta be on the right layer. And then that would um, select all the colors, uh, all of the stuff in the scene that's that color. And I would go up to my, my adjustments and I would go to hue and saturation and here's my hue and saturation and I could just switch and change the color of that backdrop to whatever I wanted in the final piece. Now I made kind of a, I had a list of exactly the colors that I was using page to page so I could do make sure it was all uniform and then this is what I converted it to. So it was for this color to this color and then I made a layer here for shadows which I used the sky color to do the shadows um, it just adds more uniformity to everything and basically as you can see here if I disable the layer the mask so basically it's a layer of just pure blue color and then I would put a mask on top of it and then I would just draw on the mask um, and reveal the areas of shadow and the areas of light that I needed and for highlights I went in there with orange and then I did the same process but on an overlay setting you can also do this on like a screen setting um, 
but I really liked the warm tones I was getting through the overlay setting. And for here, I just added uh, basically like a paper texture. I also added the red blood there, as you can see. Now uh, there's just little things here, like more blood splatter I added, and then I went in and I just did a highlight. So this is basically like a rim highlight that you would see in photography, just helping um, pull people off the background so they stand out a little bit more. But yeah, that's about how my coloring process went. As you can see, with this, this page is a spread, and this is how I often work. Um, I just feel like when I can see what's coming on the next page, it's easier for me to decide how to pace out the storytelling because I really want anything that's major or surprising to be on the next page when it flips. Um, like I could have easily done this as a single page, but there's a lot of emotional impact here where the character is telling the story of how he got to where he is and about his how his father died. Um, so I just wanted a big splash page just to really um, nail home that, uh, that emotion. And also you see here I'm really breaking the grid here. This is when I d choose to break grids, um, is when I would need a really emotionally impactful scene. But okay, well that gives you an idea of um, how I do my, my comic book pages and how I've done them in the past. Um, let me just close. Oops. So I hope that was somewhat easy to follow. And you can follow me uh, at groaneth.ca. Um, that's where I have my art blog currently. Um, you can see as I work more on um, redoing this comic into a black and white comic um, there. So thank you for listening. And I hope you guys really get something from this. And uh, that's my process. Thank you.